I'm Donna Bold Larson. I live on a ranch in Casper, Wyoming, and I'm a PRCA stock contractor. My name is Darcy Bold. I live in Pueblo West, Colorado, and I'm also a PRCA stock contractor. And your uh, parents? Yeah, our our mother's name is Eileen Bold, and our father is Harry Bold, and he's a PRCA stock contractor. We're third generation stock contractors. And your siblings? We have uh, five brothers and sisters. One actually passed away last fall, but uh, our older brother Wayne runs the Canadian Rodeo Company, and Donna, Doug, and I are Triple V Rodeo Company, and then Kirsten, of course, is our younger sister who works for my dad. Well, I, um, I didn't move to the United States until seven years ago when my mother passed away in Canada. But in the summertime, when, because we were going to school then, and I would come down and work for my dad in the summer, and I was a timer at that, at, in those days, and we would help do whatever we needed to do, whether it be polish shafts or get the costumes ready or wash horses. or It was just kind of not a designated job per se, but just everybody just pitched in and did whatever we needed to be, needed to be done. And as a child, I rodeoed with that in Canada because, you know, I was a, I'm older than she. And, uh, like, we had white horses and all blue and white saddles on the front end. And I remember as a child, like, what we basically knew, and you were probably pretty small to know this, we rode in the back seat of the car most of the time. <laughs> you remember traveling as a small child, and, you know, and that's what we did a lot of. And then when we'd get to the rodeo, like, our mother would dress us up. She sewed beautifully. Our mother, Eileen Bold, is a fabulous seamstress, and we still have pictures of us in beautiful squaw tops and beautiful tailored pants and she made the little boys cowboy shirts uh, you know she mm -hmm. cause it was very difficult to buy really good western wear uh, in the 50s and 60s I mean there was not a lot of it and so she made most of our clothes and I was rode in the parades and grand entries and different things when I was a little girl when dad was rodeoing in Canada so it was, it was a it was a great life a great family life and we were very proud I remember one story our brother Wayne rode Bronx very well and he's five years older than I and I'm the oldest daughter and he had Reg Kessler's horse hat rack and he was 16 and he was in the short round at the Calgary Spring Rodeo and we dressed up and went to watch Wayne I mean we were just my father changed his shirt three times he was so nervous because <laughs> his son I mean had the bucking horse of the year it bucked him off but we were in the front row cheering it was it was an exciting family time because everyone was so excited to see you know and hopeful that he could ride him but he was a little bit young a little bit young and you know, bucked him off well besides your singing uh, do you play instruments do you the, the boys play guitars right mother played the piano and we st you know we all took piano lessons in one capacity or another but we um we sing you know together sometimes it w you know we were always as children i do remember this whenever we would have guests over for dinner or people would come to visit we would just line up like train bears and mother would be on the piano and dad would say sing you know and we'd they all be perform. singing away <laughs> they perform. So, yeah I, re I do remember that yeah. we all we were taken to calgary as children and took singing lessons from norma piper pocatera and she was in milan italy uh, opera singer and we were we have, we were trained we don't act like it sometimes but we were <laughs> had trained musical voices and the one thing as a child if we remember you're not supposed to yodel because when you get a break in your voice it's really hard on your voice to yodel so we'd yodel all the way home from city <laughs> <laughs> we were nothing you weren't supposed well, to well I just thought you know if she yeah. doesn't want us to do it maybe we ought to try and see what is it, what it's all about uh, no we had wonderful family concerts and you know the boys play guitars and ukuleles Played a ukulele too. Mm -hmm. So uh, music was a large part of our family right. yeah, growing right. as children. Yeah. In 2005, you formed uh, with your brother um, Doug. Yes. The Triple V Rodeo. So, with uh, Canada and the United States bookings, uh, how how do you handle? Do do you each take care of uh, the the bookings the dates of the rodeos or is that to one person or I know you have to help each other but how does that work for you we decided that it would work better because we're all quite independent people that we would each have our own rodeos within the corporation so we hire all our own people we do everything independently but if 
one of us are at a rodeo and we need more livestock, or and then we will combine. Like Bill and Donna come, or her husband, and they bring bucking horses and bulls to my rodeo in Canyon City in May. And then Doug may take some horses to a rodeo for Donna. Don and Bill take horses to dad and bulls. So the actual livestock moves within us, but the production, the hiring of the people, the checkbooks and everything are all separate because it just works better that yeah. way. And I would say probably, I mean, dad has been wonderful to us. He's given us the opportunity to be in the rodeo business, and but we have had to make our way. And um, you know, through different errors and everything else, he's always there to be a great counselor for us. But we are on our own. I mean, the opportunity was there, but now, you know, that's we just run our own deal. And um, probably the greatest, one of the greatest things in my life, right after my mom passed away, my dad gave me a very well-bred colt, and. Um, that's how my breeding program got started. And I'm much younger in the business than uh, as Don and Bill and my brother Doug, but I'm starting to raise colts myself now. And you know, they're just kind of like your children. You take them and you just want them to perform so well. <laughs> and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But uh, you know, it's a, it's a growing experience. Have you, uh, no doubt you've had stock go to the NFR? Absolutely, yes. Donna and Bill do every yeah. year. What yes. a thrill that is. Yeah. What a thrill. Well, tell me about it. Well, the first year I, I was so nervous uh, because it, we've been to the National Files, but Dad's been to 50 of them. He's one of only two stock contractors that has had two or fi uh, livestock at every na National Finals. And the first year that we got bulls there, I well, you just wonder if this is going to be the day when they decide not to buck or something. And here we sit in the front row. Right. <laughs> That's another thing. So um, it was outstanding. I, we've won four buckles at the national finals, uh, go-round buckles in the bull ride, and, and we haven't yet got a horse there. Our horses are very young, and our company hasn't got a horse there yet. They were on the list this year, but we didn't make the final cut. But we're really excited about it. It's, it's like, I think it must be like when uh, Mrs. Uh, Manning watches her sons play football. You know, she has two, you know, two star quarterbacks, and you finally get your star bull there, and you're, you're, it's the most exciting thing I ever had happen. Uh, but it's it's also painfully so scary. This year, well, tell me about a typical day for you with that many days of rodeo. Well, I'm an early rise. Our whole family is like we're up at 5:30 or 6 or <laughs> in the morning, and uh, we go down and feed the bulls, of course. Then come back and we set the stock for the day and for the rodeo and then we go back and we trail our horses because it's our pasture is very close to the rodeo grounds so we saddle up the horses and trail them into the rodeo grounds, sort the livestock and then go back and clean up for the rodeo and then I produce the rodeo and after it's over trail the horses back and uh, feed hay and that's the day. So you have really good help. I mean, you oh, don't have do. anybody get sick and tired after two or three days. Oh, you no, no, hurt. no. There's no quit in us because when we travel with my dad, he is older than us and he never gets tired. So you can drive a thousand miles, have ten performances, get in and drive another thousand miles, and you don't dare say, I'm yeah. tired. You <laughs> don't dare <laughs> say that. Oh, gosh, no. There's yeah. no tired. When it's rodeo season, we work. And, that's, okay. and I think that's something that Dad has impressed upon us as well, is that each of us do our own work. We don't have a lot of hired men to do it. We feed, we sort, we do everything, because that's part of being in the business. So you better know every capacity of it. Yeah, we're not token women. No. There's, there's <laughs> token women around. You know, there are. There are token women around that have... We saddle horses, we feed, we've done every job there is. A, I don't think there's a job we haven't done at the rodeo. Right. We haven't fought bulls yet no, that's or right. announced. <laughs> that's the only two How parts. How about auctioneering? You no. said no. your grandpa and your no. dad. No. 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 And Doug, Doug did. Yeah, he, took a, yeah, and he doesn't do it now, but I think that was one thing he did. But that's the only thing. I don't think we don't have cards. We no. have cards for every other right. job, PRC cards. But we, can't, we haven't been able to announce. Right. Well, we probably could, but we haven't tried. But uh, that's, we do every job.